Uh, yeah, OK. I think we've got... Uh, let's see, I think uh, Mr Steve might be on the line. Ah, oh, yes, there's the uh, the gong. Q Sakamoto. Oh, right, and we, we all... Sukiyakaki. We certainly... We have Noel on the line as well. OK, we're getting some... Uh, yeah, feedback. Some <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. I'm sleep detecting you tonight. All right, does it sound OK? Yeah, very good. On the AR88. Oh, yes, on yes. On the broad setting, it's very good. And I have listened on the big two-ohm speaker. Oh, yes. And uh, very authoritative. Right. Now, the... Uh, the two ohm speaker. Mm -hmm. Let's get myself up here. There we go. Yeah, I've uh, tested my two ohm speaker. It's a beautiful sounding speaker. They're good, aren't they? And it's in perfect condition. The cones sort of um, mm. almost pristine. Yeah. No, you did well. It's in fine condition. Yeah. And it's um, they've got the um, the roller patent and that uh, that ribbing is that supposed to um, help dampen the uh, yeah. and strengthen the cardboard coil. There's lots of. I've been reading those Australian Radio World. Magazines, aren't Australia, they incredible? Aren't they? And there's a lot of roller information in there. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes, roller certainly must. There must have been bankrolling the whole enterprise. I think. I think they were. They may well have been used. So yeah, all good. But um, no, I'm glad it works well. In a baffle or in a in a good box, that'll have. Uh, it'll sound fantastic. Oh yeah, it would. It'd be interesting. It's certainly quite a fire speaker. Hmm. And two ohms. It even sucks more power out of most amplifiers than you you normally get. Yeah, I'd say so. So it's it's quite good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll partner up very nicely with your AR88. Yeah, I must get uh, the AR88 working again. Mm. Yes. And yeah, I mean, I'm you can... still here. Okay, oh. is that you, Noel? Yep, that's Noel. Go oh, ahead. Good evening. Hi, Noel. How are you? No, I haven't. <laughs> right. Now, uh, let's see. Uh, now, you going out to Noel. Noel, just speak there, Steve. OK, no worries. Now, I'm hearing you OK, Noel. You're on, oh, evidently on talkie. I see what I've got there. Uh, OK. Yeah, now, okay. Noel should... Um, oh, I see. I've got a... Um, it's... Uh, talkie auxiliary 2. Okay. Oh, I see what it is. Now, that's uh, going there. Auxiliary 2. So, if I want... Yeah, wind it up there. I should be going out in auxiliary two. Okay. Now you speak, Steve. Okay, hello. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, you're going out in auxiliary two. Okay, so Noel can now hear me. Yep. So Noel should be able to hear us. I all. could hear you before. Oh, okay. And I'll turn that off. Uh, yes. Yeah. So that's good. No, it was a great, um, a great um, uh, little uh, fest. Yes, it was. It was. It was good. It was. Uh, you know, it's usually more uh, sellers than buyers, but that's the. Uh, that's yep. With these, uh, with these HRSA uh, events, but um, yeah, it was, it was. Oh, I'm sounding very, yeah, very, very hissworthy. You got more oh. hiss than last night. Why is it? <laughs> it's, it's, it's the gremlin. It's the uh, Mr. Cunningham. Yeah. Because I've done nothing. I've walked in here and switched on exactly as it was last night. Maybe I can ramp up the. Yeah, maybe, the, maybe. Um, Hello, is that better? That's much, that's much better. Okay, yeah. I reckon the the pot's a bit titchy. Yeah. I can go up a bit higher still. Yeah, go up as high as you can. Well, okay. it might start to distort now. No. Hello, test one, two, three. Yeah, Gosh, that's a lot stronger, isn't it? A couple of dB. Yes. All right, I can actually back off a bit. Well, you can back me off a bit, maybe. Okay. H how's that? Oh, that's okay. I'll leave it like that. All right. Um, I'm yeah, still not so I see uh, Noel's there um, resting and l listening. So just add in anything you want to want to uh, Noel. Yeah. Okay. Well, the compressor's doing its job, isn't it? God. Yes. It's a it's a terrible compressor. <laughs> you need an Audimax or something. <laughs> yes. Oh, I can. Feel I'm going for a ride. Yeah. Um, they probably back off maybe three dB. Yes, I think I need to because it's yeah. just uh, making me seasick. Yeah. It's distortion, Steve. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Here now I've got that right box here. of pots. There's some great pots in there. Oh, wire wound. So just come and take your pick. I need to get a few because oh. uh, that's going to make a difference to these fine tuning arrangements. Look, that box of pots. You know how much wire wound pots cost? Mm. Like there's probably. A hundred dollars worth of pots there, oh, at least. Easily, there's about uh, there's about fifty or sixty pots in that box, yeah. at least. Like often at Hamfest, like they're two dollars each a pot. Mm, mm. No, someone's entire collection of uh, pots. Someone, uh, pots. someone carked it, and they, their their wife said, "Get rid of these pots," yeah, and they've got all the pots you on got them. them. All for nothing. <laughs> it didn't and cost you anything at all. And you've got those beautiful Atwater chem sets. Oh, look, that's been interesting. I've been reading about them, and uh, yeah, look, they are a uh, they're sort of their budget line, but yep. still, um, I think I did get a. Budget 
bargain. Mm. And uh, yeah, I look forward to. I don't think it should take too much to get them going. They are the, the trick about them is that they're mechanically aligned, so that all the stages are, are linked mechanically. So you right. have to, which is great if it's all tuned up properly. But you, the tuning itself is going to be quite a process. Yeah. Because it, the, each stage has to be in in sync. So uh, they uh, people say that they're a little bit of a hassle to sort of set up. But once you've got them in in alignment, they're fine. So uh, that could be an interesting. That would have been a revolution in its time, not to have to independently tune each stage. Oh yeah, it would have been a real pain to have to tune it like the uh, yeah. the neutral grain. That's right. Yeah. So that's uh, but it got, uh, quite early, 1927. Really. So uh, interesting. But so uh, yeah, they look like they're complete, and uh, it's just making up a little. I have to get a whole heap of uh, nine volt bats and or AEA yeah. cells and make up a uh, a battery box. Why so, don't you just get a um a uh, what are we going to say? Oh yes, put <laughs> a little transistor radio in there and connect I it know. to it. I know you could do that, but that's cheating. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, defeats the purpose. Now that now that. But the, oh, good day. Now you're on what frequency? Oh, one four five zero. Okay, you could come up on one forty five. I think he said 1450. Oh, yeah, he's on 14. Are you on 145? Oh, okay. Mm. Well, that's good. We can stay on that for a moment, and also if Frank comes up. Yeah, that's right. I might just back off one. Yeah, yeah, look, that was um, amazing um, yeah. sale. Uh, what else? Now. Yes, you, the, you've got a turntable. The turntable, uh, that's the belt, there's no belt on it. Oh. And okay. I, I used, I got a, a box full of different size rubber bands. Yep. And it works, but it's wowy because okay. you can't, you know, they don't work properly. Yeah. Look, I think they're a standard size built, the linear yeah. design, and you'd probably get one for 50 cents from Wes Components Look, or somewhere. I'm sure I would, but what I've done, I don't, I've got you buyer done tables. The, you have done got, the drop test already, have I've you? I've got CEI <laughs> turntables I haven't even unpacked. <laughs> yes, that's right. So... I, I took the tone arm off. Yep. Oh, look, the, the cartridge is beautiful, sounds mm. lovely, so that's mm. okay. That's good. I took the tone arm and the cartridge off, and there's a spare yep. uh, needle there as well. Yep. And I've thrown the turntables in the wood pile. Okay. It's Fair big enough. and heavy and ugly and takes up real estate. Fair enough. Real estate's the premium, <laughs> isn't it? Yes, well done. Well, you've got another tone arm for the collection. Oh, now. and it's a lovely. It's got all adjustments and stuff yes, you don't need. Yes, all, all, all the anti-skate. Yes, they're a sort of budget line <laughs> SME, I think, the linear design yeah. tone arms. But look, the, the thing is that you've got a good cartridge out of it. Which yeah. Is the, uh, five bucks. For five bucks, you've yep. got an N, uh, M44. Yep. yep. Which will serve you nicely. And very easy to get aftermarket stuff. Oh, the yes, and just fit in so easily and you get a 78 and all that stuff. Yep, all the style that you can hope for. So that's uh, that's a good outcome. Yeah, no, um, I thought you might do something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it might have been drop test material. Well, it's nothing, to, just nothing interesting. No, it wouldn't um, do much. It would just go thud. The modulation monitor, beautiful yes. piece of equipment. Now, does it work? Oh, it works perfectly. On uh, 160? Uh, well... Unfortunately not. Mm. It's got auto-tuning. It's ah, quite advanced machine. You right. just plug a signal in, it'll find out the frequency between okay. 9 and a gigahertz, 9 megs ah, and a gigahertz. so it's 9 shelf, is it? Yep. Okay. And 8.5, it works below that it doesn't. Mm. So it obviously self-scans. It's okay. self-calibrating. It's self, um, so okay. it does a direct reading, and I checked it with my Marconi signal generator. Mm -hmm. You put 5 kc deviation, it reads yep. 5 on the meter. It's, it it tracks it perfectly. Well. Wow. So it doesn't matter what frequency or what level you put in. Okay. It, it's got obviously auto automatic tracking or something well. and it just reads the deviation. Well that's excellent isn't it? But uh, you just want something that's going to work on 160. Well I was thinking I could make, look it works beautifully on two, I'll use it as a monitor on two mm. and the quality out of it just sounds like it's unbelievable. Mm. It's just fantastic. Oh very good. It's a bit shrill because I've got it equalised to sound good through you know, crappy receivers. Yes, it but has got a, 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 a the emphasis on it as well. It has, it? yeah, mm. it's got uh, 75 mm. and uh, I might could build up like a little oscillator converter thing to convert 160 to 9 or 10 okay. megs. Okay, yep. Because they said you can listen to 10.7 off IFs from it. Mm. So if you had a comm set with 10.7, mm. you could tap off that. You could, that's true. But yep. it's a lovely little set. And it's yes. just, 
just well, it's diminutive. It's yeah. not too big. Mm. This is the thing, isn't it? So getting, I know. getting small, nice, compact test equipment is uh, it's mm. certainly got its attractions, doesn't it? <laughs> it certainly has. Mm. So look, that that was great for. I think I, I gave him. He, he, yeah, I ended up giving him uh, about a bit more than um, yeah. half. Okay. But I think it was really good. Okay. For what it, it oh, look, I think fine. it was a good value, even yeah. at full price. It wasn't a bad value, no. considering no. what it was. And uh, it's portable. You can, mm. you can test two-way radios. You can test the deviation. Yeah, you never mm. know what's happening. Yeah. And if you want to really check your deviation, I could lend it to you and I could have a listen yeah. to see how good it is. Yes, that would be interesting. That could mm. be worthwhile. Mm. Yeah, okay. And the uh, had a full set of batteries. I, I think it's probably been used in the last while. Yeah, well, the battery seems to charge up. Mm. It's got mains, of course, and, uh, yeah. and everything. Okay. Uh, but it's so easy to use because mm. that other one with the knob and the turning dials mm. and the, the handles and the crank handle, mm. I, I, you're just twiddling things and it's going swish, swish, and yep. uh, it just takes hours to line up. And you look at the book mm. to calibrate it, you've got to do 10 different things. Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> labour intensive and mm. it's not really what you need. Something that's self aligning is yeah. it certainly has its advantage. And it um, works, it's an AM as well, AM um, yeah, that's good. meter. Okay, so have, you, have you tried it out on AM as well? I haven't, but I, I should, mm. I suppose. Mm. Um, Would it possibly work out, give you 160 on AM? I don't think so. Mm. There's obviously a uh, some receiver thing that scans mm. for signal. Mm. It needs quite a bit, mm. uh, 50 millivolts to oh, make it okay. work. So okay. you need a fair bit of signal to make it yes, work. Yes, yes, OK. Um, but yeah, so you'd have to find a way of tapping, getting a reliable source. Yeah. But that's probably not too difficult. No, no. Mm. Um, 50 mill millivolts to a, to a watt, I think it'll mm. take. Mm. Okay. So that was good. Yeah, um, you did well with that. Now the uh, the car radio. Yes. <coughs> have you had a play around with that? <laughs> I opened it up. I, it hasn't. It's never been opened. Really? That back bit's been opened, but okay. the screws to the actual the main... The vibrator looked like it had been replaced yep. at some point. The actual receiver bit... The screws are all rusted in. They've never been taken out. Is that right? It's quite an effort to get them out and okay. split, split it out. Mm -hmm. And I think it's not a commercial model. I think it's been made by a local company. Okay. It's the, the quality of the chassis and everything gets pretty crap. Right. Um, and it's got, um, I think it's either a kit set uh -huh. or made by, you know, some local company uh, that made radios for cars. Yeah, well, the dial looks quite official. I, well, they would have bought that from the US. They would have bought ah, the parts. Ah, right, because that is probably a Dodge panel or a Ford yeah. panel or something that had its uh, proprietary that's right. dial, and they just made up a, a wireless to go yeah, with it. Yeah, I think that's what they did. Mm. And uh, anyway, the Seavers, it's um, it's a 6-valve Seavers, mm -hmm. RF stage. Mm -hmm. It's got... Um, uh, you know, the, the 76s, all those sort of valves, the, the five-pin pre-octal valves. Mm -hmm. uh, Three-gang condenser can couple to those um, bungee cords to the yep. dial. Yep, yep. Um, mm -hmm. The volume controls via that cord as well. Mm -hmm. Does the, it sort of mechanically work okay? It w works mechanically. Yep. And uh, the, the output stage, mm -hmm. which is um, in that back bit with the, mod with the yep. vibrator, yep. It's a uh, octal socket, so I think it's either six L six or six V six. Ah. So that would put it mid thirties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the other valves are pre octal, but they'd mm -hmm. probably put an octal in there. Mm -hmm. But it's got, um, uh, yeah. It would probably five, pack a bit of punch. Six. Yeah, well, it's um, mm -hmm. it's uh, it's got. Uh, I shall go and count. I think it's got. It might even have. Might even be a seven valve. It's obviously. Really? I think. Uh, just hang on, I'll just go, yeah, and, uh, and, have on, a, go and have a look. The, uh, Check it out. Mm -hmm. So if anyone's listening, this is, we're talking about the HRSA sale, garage sale today. So uh, checking out our respective purchases. Okay. Um, it's five, five Velvies plus a 6V6 mm. and a self, um, you know, um, a, 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 a synchronous a synchronous yep. uh, a vibrator. Yep. So that's that's um, five. Um, n there's no rectifier, so that's mm. five actual valves. Okay. So it'd be. I think it'd be a pretty hot set, mm. and it's pretty dusty underneath. But mm. uh, it, it probably would work. I'll I'll run it. You'll have it. Yeah, just run it up on a uh, separate power supply. Yeah. Looks like the vibrator was looking a bit dodgy. Was yeah, it? I was just hanging there because I think it probably isolated to make it stop buzzing. But yeah, they usually put them on little rubber mm. grommets and things, but yeah. they look like it might have been a later generation vibrator in that. Might have been. Mm. Um, so I think it was probably made 
in the mid 30s with mm -hmm. the older valves because mm. I had them yep. and um, but you know it, it should mm. work well I'd know, it'd be a very good uh, video to do oh it would be it'd be interesting particularly if it works then you have to mount it in your car oh. and the passengers will have a footrest I know a vibrating hot footrest that's right it'll keep their feet warm it would certainly keep the car warm yeah and you put a two ohm speaker screw it in the thing yep you could see that would have had to be behind the firewall mm. in those old cars in the engine compartment with the heat and the dust and the oil yep. and stuff yep that's why it was all sealed up in that box but you'd need a bit of space for it it's hard to imagine oh, not it, many cars would fit it you it wouldn't think. you'd have to have a big engine uh, uh, um, yeah packard or something you'd have to be a bigger <laughs> it would it would have to be something with a long nose bonnet yeah. and uh lots of space but because uh, it's it's sizable oh, it's it's how uh, it's about how what i'll oh, be three or three shoe boxes size yeah three shoe boxes size mm. yeah it's, it's massive yeah um yeah, so it's really quite amazing. Um, mm. The radio bit isn't quite as big because it's divided between the radio and the power supply bit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, trying to get rid of buzz and everything. Mm. But uh, it would have been, you know, not many people had radios back then. And mm. I can see why. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I imagine you would have had a, uh, would have, what would the antenna be? What did they used to use? They probably had a frame antenna. Yeah, they used in the cloth on top of those cars because they weren't oh, metal yeah. roofs. Yep. Um, Did they just have some wire? Yeah, okay. they were either cloth or um, and sort of wood. Mm. It looked like metal, but it wasn't. And they often just had the wire through there okay. until they actually decided to put a vertical thing up. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's going to be interesting. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, certainly worthwhile. Now that was an unusual, unusual mm. piece of gear. Very good for a tear down Thursday. Or yeah, whatever. I've got a couple of other old radios. Those box type with a speaker built in that sit in the front with a dial down the side oh yes reasonably common a ferris yes the ferris unit yep, yep. very solid right. unit yes and, and they very can be compact. taken out and, as a portable can't yes they? that's right mm. and there's a hot point jug plug to run them right yes <laughs> so they run on six volts or 240 yes yes and i must get one of those going because they'd mm. be pretty hot set i think have you ever converted one before or ever mucked around with one no i haven't even worked out how to open them up. okay yeah yeah <laughs> but uh they're, they're, they're sort of a, a australian thing aren't they yeah those, those ferris there was that there were a big company who were specialized in that type of yeah no ferris yeah. radios were the best mm. um in that time and i did buy for one dollar ferris transistorized am radio mm. with a built-in speaker okay so if that it can convert to 160 be a great uh, portable 160 c that's running on a 9 volt battery and mm. uh, see what and happens it would work very nicely for slope detecting i <laughs> it, imagine it would yeah yeah so what, what do i get anything else um um, um I, I think, think that's it's pretty much you i mean it was a, it was it wasn't a bad sale there was a quite a variety of uh oh yeah bits and pieces and uh there was that cassette deck that was very tempting but yeah, I, the, I, he said the belt was popped yeah once the belts go it's too much can yeah, be exactly can be hard work yep yeah they, mm. do you really need it i mean mm. look if it wasn't for tear down tuesdays mm. i'm getting all this stuff i've never <laughs> haven't done a tear down for years mm. i mean i should get to you've got you to start doing tear downs to justify all yeah. the, the gear could i think you've got 50 hits for that one with the art deco um mm. Um, iPod player, you know, that's, that's right. Well, so you've got to hits. do the full cycle, you do the tear down, <laughs> then the drop test. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I have to wait for the snow to go. Oh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, but so uh, no, look, was was good. Few people there saw the uh, Mr. Egg and Mr. Anthony. Yep, yep. Yes, they're, they're sort of. Uh, I'll see them tomorrow. Yeah, that's right. At the uh, the next one, next fest. You're doing a bit of a fest chase. Oh, I certainly am. Mm. Yeah, just something I should. Uh, yeah. Uh, Cause it's a while till the next fest isn't till Ballarat. When's Ballarat? That's in October. Yeah, well, October. Okay. A month and a bit away, I think. I've so. been meaning to go to a Ballarat because I've never. They're, they're often a bit different, aren't they? Yeah, they're very people, good. People speak. High of the Ballarat yep. Fest. No, the Ballarat one's very good. Mm. And it doesn't take that long to get to. Um, so, yeah. Okay. It's usually freezing cold there, of course, even in October. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Well, I look forward to mucking around with these at water oh, cans. Because I think I'd be able to make one good set out of the two of them. Well, they look nice. Perfect uh, Yeah, the little cabinets are in remarkable condition. Mm. But, uh, I mean, I think you can get them for... 20 odd bucks is, oh. is amazing isn't it well look even at um, the full complement of valvies that big sale uh, last year almost mm. a year ago mm. um they were going for about 70 dollars each really and i did look at them mm. and i thought oh they're just uh you know mm. 
so they people had there was quite a few of them obviously like the the, the working man set yeah but uh, <clears throat> i never thought gee that's cheap mm. but actually it's cheaper just buy they, it's the price is just dropping ridiculously i think they are i think it's just completely bottomed out yeah and uh that that sort of thing which was once a premium product is uh, yeah you've yeah. had no Best knobs missing no smash valves no they're, no they're all in they're both in fantastic condition really so you could make two to sets <laughs> uh, i know you can you can listen to stereo in, yes in, i could like at water kent i could at water at water kent stereo not in <laughs> Aka 1927. Of course, they've got all those photos, the massive Atwater Kent factory and people wiring mm. coils and all the women oh, there. Oh, look, with it was such a, it's such a well promoted yeah. establishment, were they? Or they were the bee's knees. They were, then they just stopped making them. And they all fell to bits. Yep. Yeah, but I noticed, I was looking online, there's, there's a lot of American collectors. Of, they've got a huge sort of presence still oh, in the yes. coffin radio mm. um, world. But um, no, look, it's a, it'll be an interesting process of discovery. I'll, I'll learn a, a bit about them. And yeah. the, um, yeah, so I was going to ask you about the other, uh, you, you mentioned a couple of websites. One was the Australian uh, Radio World. These are both on, on the um, AmericanHistory.com. Yep. So that, that's great. I've got that. You, but you mentioned a US site yeah. as well. Uh, no, I, it was, it was um, on that site. Oh, okay. It was, it's uh, a magazine called... Yeah. Radio engineering. Oh, okay. Radio engineering. I'm just writing it down. Yeah. Okay. And, and it's mostly cast related, isn't it? Mostly cast related, and like it's an interesting magazine. It's got um, really technical articles with with formulas and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's got descriptive and historical articles. Mm -hmm. It's got sales and management articles. Oh, okay. It's mainly technical, but mm. it's it really um, mm. uh, covers the whole gamut of. Um, the, the whole you know broadcasting industry okay and sure. it starts you know with that Walter Kent stage mm. and ends up uh, with quite advanced um, equipment and uh, FM and TV and all this sort of stuff so it's an amazing magazine mm. no it sounds really good I'll have to have a look mm. at that I, I'm keen to sort of it's sort of hard to there's so much material on that site that it's oh. hard to know where to start. But I'm, yeah. I'm pleased to have a few points of departure. Well, I just clicked on the wrong thing and got it. I thought, yeah, right. this is a good Yeah, good that's often the way, isn't it? You just sort of serendipitously find these things. I, it, it's amazing reading about... So I don't know much about the other Mr Hull. So this is A Hull. Yep. And he's obviously the fellow who... Uh, who, he who didn't get zapped. He didn't get zapped. That's right. He survived. <laughs> and um, it, but it's interesting that they had their own uh, all wave, all world DX club associated yeah, with the. Yeah, uh, yeah. So they obviously had a, uh, a significant following still to be able to have their own sort of. Uh, There's one article yeah. in that uh, Australasian Radio World mm -hmm. about about the Hull brothers, written by A.G. Hull, but he's written oh. it in third person or whatever. Oh, and, really? But he's written about his brother and um, how he got zapped. Okay. And he's sort of... Uh, he was a younger brother. Right. <clears throat> and... Uh, <clears throat> And he was uh, he was interested in it, but he wasn't old enough to be part of it. Then uh, he became part of it. Then his brother got zapped. He sort of became oh. the, the big brother and started his magazine and everything. Okay, so it just sort of yep. deals with the sort of the the, uh, the the way yeah the history mm. of it all. Okay. Yep. And he tried to decentralise. He, <coughs> he yep. built a house down at uh, Mornington. Yes, yes, I was just reading about that at Ballara Hill. Yeah, and there's a photograph. It'd be interesting to find the house. Mm. It's probably st still there. It'd be an Art Deco house. Yes, it's probably probably still there. Maybe now, how would it be to buy that house mm. and do some do make a radio magazine you and po podcast from there? You could, <laughs> you could, you could go full circle on this. Yes, but it, I, I had no idea that there was a competing um, magazine to uh, neither did I. Radio hob hobbies and TV and hobbies. So yep. it's a um, it's an, and it, and it ran continuously from 1936 to 1951. Yeah, and it's um it's. It's a narrower field. It is really radio and hi-fi, mm. but it's um, amazing. It's sort of it's, it wouldn't have been the big, bigger magazine. I think his number of sponsors was this roller. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah, it seems like it's a roller endorsed thing. Mm. But uh, that, that in itself is interesting because you get a real insight into the roller factory. Oh, that's right. Doing. There's always a photograph, the latest roller thing at the front. Yeah, they even got the one I was looking at before had a picture of them uh, making the uh, the magnets in the little furnace. Oh yes, the little furnace up. hole. Yes. Mm. So getting the priming up the magnets, the Alnico magnets. Yep. They're large speakers. 
But yeah. um, no, look, there'll be a lot of intrigue with that. I'll have to... Uh, and they've nearly got the entire complement. There's only about six issues missing yeah. from its full run. Isn't that amazing? It is, yeah. So that's a... Yeah. Uh, and you can see even search... It's great that they've refined their search engines on this as well. So you can search more specifically on yeah. things yeah. within all of the mags. That's He's always got a new receiver, on, you know, designed. Mm. And the Roller G12 was a big, good speaker in mm. those days. Yes, yeah, so it was a very well-regarded speaker, the, the, the G12. Yeah. There were quite a lot of speakers there today, weren't there, at the fest? There were. I mean, mm. uh, and, and quite good prices. Mm. Apparently, that one he was selling for 100 bucks. Yeah. that was the high-powered guitar model. Oh, really? That's, and he said that, that there's very rare because they've all that, popped. Okay, okay. Well, that is interesting. Mm. Fair enough. So that's a very, uh, that's a premium yep. model. Yeah, because uh, that... Uh, I saw that on the table and I thought he was a bit ambitious there. Yeah. But the uh, the standard UX is a uh, is basically a copy of the, uh, the uh, Goodman's 300. Uh, is it right? 300. Right. They're okay. the same thing, really. Yeah. Yeah. But um, well, I think they sound very good. A friend of mine had a pair of those UXs and some big cabinets and they sounded fantastic. And, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, they, they're quite good. Yeah. yeah. He could have bought all those big speakers there today. And, oh, uh, <coughs> God, you have a, have a wall of sound. You could have, yeah, Phil Speck the wall <coughs> yes. in your house. One thing I would like to experiment with um, uh, is uh, using open baffles mm. and having a really, you have to do it sort of outside or have it, maybe when you get your pool room organised, that would be yeah. a good space to I do open I could put it between baffles. the two rooms. Yeah, if you had a very big open baffle and that, you know, maybe using a conventional speaker panel but put some wings on it yep. and um, uh, sort of place them fairly close to corners and find a central position, I think they would sound very much like uh, electrostats. Oh, yeah. That's the uh, conventional thinking, but they're not practical for most people because of the width and the sides. They're not particularly lounge room friendly, but apparently they can sound really good. And there's one fellow online who's used Goodman's uh, Axiom 150s and just raves about the experience. He says they just sound amazing. Well, I mean, there'd be no coloration at all. Mm. <coughs> now, theoretically, there wouldn't be. Mm. And if it's close to the floor, you'd get yeah. some uh, uh, re reflection and you'd probably get uh, uh, some enhanced bass. So uh, that would be an interesting one to, to experiment with. Well, in the Briggs book, they tested speakers I had a they hoist them up a hundred foot in a crane mm. on a big massive baffle mm. and that's the way they test them out in free air. That's right. They did too. That's true. <laughs> yes. There's a description of them doing the uh, air free air tests on the uh, Type 3 loudspeakers in that article in the uh, oh. Telecom Journal and they talk right. about uh, the uh, he compliments the engineers at the Telstra Labs for uh, working in uh, unsavoury Melbourne weather hoisting speakers right. up on the crane. <laughs> you can just imagine in the rain. <laughs> It might have got a bit wet. <laughs> they may have got a bit soggy. Had a few mm. soggy cones. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But city how no, look, I've often thought open baffle would be yeah. an area to, to explore with loud speakers. Well, it should be. Uh, just you need such a big baffle to get decent bass. That's a problem. Mm, you do, and it's for most situations it's not practical. But yeah. it would be uh, it'd be worth trying out. I know that Wharfdale produced a, a sand filled baffle speaker in when the ESL 57 came out. Mm. Uh, to to uh, they tried to uh, design a product to compete against it, and the reviews were almost equally as favourable. And people were, really? were saying that it sounded like a uh, like a quad. Yeah. Now yeah. I find that a bit hard to believe, but it, I'd love to hear one. Look, I think uh, even you know cheaper speakers like it put in an infinite baffle would sound very good. Mm. Like I found, you know, cheap speakers in the big boxes sound really good. Mm. Um, so. It's, uh, yeah, uh, open baffle would be fantastic. It should be no compromise, really. Mm. 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 Yes, if, you want, if you've got a speaker that's got you know, fast transient <coughs> responses and yeah. a strong magnet mm. and, um, you know, good compliance, it, it would be a uh, it would be a worthwhile experiment, I think. Yep, yep. So that's one for the, for the uh, R&D department. <coughs> it certainly is. Yeah. That's, um, there's an article in, uh, in the uh, radio engineering... Thing, yeah, and it's about bi big speakers, mm -hmm. and it's, it's pretty early, 1928. Okay, and uh, this guy's got the photo of the massive speakers, a bit like RCA speakers and yep. stuff, and this amp, it's got 2,000 volts on the plate and big valves. Okay, and he said that people listening to music 
louder than it, than it actually is. He said it's, 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 it's amazing to hear vocals and violins and soft instruments super loud and blasting. Okay. And he said orchestras and things are just incredible. Mm. Of course, no one would have heard that they like 100 never watts. Had, they would have never had that experience. Yeah. Everything would have been... Yeah, it, it, anything larger than life would have just had so much impact on, yeah. on, on the first listener, I'd imagine. It was hard enough to get normal volume mm. and uh, to... Mm. Uh, to be able to really pack a punch. Yeah, yeah, it's... Um, I might have it here. Yes, okay, I'll uh, be good to read that. I'd like yeah. to read what they have to say. It's... Um, that's very well. Dum, dum, dum. Um, I've, got, I've got them all down here. Ah, oh, radio engineering. I think it was one of the more uh, 1928 something. Okay, I'm just going to turn the volume down a little bit. Yeah, here. okay, because oh, you're, you're slow for Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just a little bit uh, screamy. Mm. That's, that, that's better. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, 1928. Yeah. Um, oh, I haven't got the access to it. I've got the yeah. iPad here, but I can't yeah. easily find it. I'll have to do a bit of a scan yeah, for 11. it. There's so much material on this site. Uh, it's, it's, it's a, it's it a is, I think it's one of the be best sites in the, uh, in the, on the internet. Yeah. If you're interested in radio. It's, it's incredible. <laughs> yeah. Everything. Every avenue. Every, 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 every. it, it's like... Um, Look, broadcast advertising, media, encyclopedias, yeah. televisor, um, programming and production, R&R. &R, it's just, it just goes on and on. Every periodical related to TV and radio. Dance band um, oriental records are very alluring, I think. They certainly are. They, uh, I'll have to uh, keep that playlist active. Now, you have to get a garage turntable too. A garage? <laughs> yeah, like he's got Mr. whatever his name is. Oh, yes, yeah. I used to have one of those. Mm. I think that one's got a bit of wow. Yes, I think it does a bit, and I think it adds something to it, it as well. It does. Maybe the music's crap, it's just the wow. <laughs> we <laughs> like the wow, it's carrying it. It's right, it might be a signature wow that's, uh, yes. that's creating a wow factor. Mm. Yeah. Is wow there software to wow. get rid of wow? Yeah, I think there is. Oh. There is. What, they, what do they do? I think they, they look for a, a bit of harm or something and as a reference. Right, yeah. And then uh, try and square things up. Mm. But um, yeah. as a part of the, but, um, yeah. you're dropping out. It's, it's my end here. Obviously, the uh, I don't know. You just dropped out beyond below the squelch. I've got it up fairly high. Yeah. You're back again now. It's really swift. Unless it's is it windy outside? Maybe. Maybe it is. Yeah. It's pretty pretty patchy. Now, isn't that crazy that this mm. happens on Saturdays but not Fridays? It was solid like yesterday. I know. It drives me nuts. I don't know what Maybe you need 160 on to, to, to strengthen the wave. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yes, maybe there's some pseudoscience going on. Yeah. Well, there is pseudoscience. Yeah, I'll just go on outside and see if it's uh, windy. See if it is. Test the water. I can't even see outside. It's a little bit, but not much. Mm. The, the, this, my two metre antenna is on an angle as well. Right, yeah, that is getting it out of phase. A little bit out of phase. Mm. So uh, that's the way things go. But I'm putting out, I think it's on full power, should be 50 watts. Yeah, well, all that, the fans are I mean, that's really big power. Yes, but I've always had that problem in two metres with you. Yeah. It's just mm. the nature, way of things. I think yeah. some sort of uh, refraction. Issue. We'll have to get, have to work out why Torquay isn't working at your end. I will have to sort that out. I'll try. Mm. I'm about to get another in, another computer e interface. Um, one, right. uh, there's a new range of sound cards with mic preamps built in. Right. Kids want to do a whole lot of recording, so uh, this is just an easy way to do it. And um, it's just like an outboard sound card. And uh, so it's mainly for them, but I'll probably use it, try it out on Talkie. And it's also got the facility to do, um, uh, what, what's it called when you, um, you're, you're doing your um, podcasts and, uh, sorry, when you're doing your um, uh, ne negative, what do they call it when you're processing back through the computer? What you do it, you're doing it with Talkie all the time. Uh, mix minus. Oh yes, yes. Does that automatically? Doesn't yeah, it? Oh good. Yeah, so it's got mix minus capacity as well. Oh, good. So oh, you can well. actually draw yeah. in and you can create an in online mixer. So a virtual mixer, a, a, a door. Yeah, um, 
so yes, that could that could have some. So I'm going to get that in the next couple of weeks. So that may be oh, good. that may be another mm. way forward. Yeah. Sort of mm. Mm. Yes, mix and minus. Why didn't I think of that? Yeah. Yeah. But uh, it seems to work quite well with you. You've got that, that going quite. Now that your new desk it gives you enough auxiliary yeah, inputs and there's, things. Yeah, there's so. enough um, things to do. I don't know what I'd do without the desk, really. Mm. Um, I should have got something like this. You know, one of the one of the um, the retro factor, but actually you can't. You've got to have the if you want to do this. It's a bit hard to do without. That's the, something uh, else you've got at the best. You've got a, another uh, um, view panel potential. Oh yes, yes, a nice little thing. I've got a box of useless relays. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. But the panel, I'd, I'd probably never use it, but it would be nice to stick meters or something on mm. it and switches. I could, see I've got a bo wooden box here with a, the transmitter switching. Mm. I could put that in that slopey box mm. with proper keys, Kellogg keys, yes. and a few knobs and things that would look nice for, for the transmitter network switching rather than a wooden box, although the wooden box is a lot smaller. Yeah. But it doesn't look official. Oh, you have to look official. <coughs> yeah. If it doesn't look official, it's, it's, it, mm. you're, not the, you're not getting the theatrical side of it right. That's right, yeah. It's, it's, it's absolutely essential, because this, this is all the sort of big game, mm. so we, we have to get the theatrics and exactly. all of the, uh, yeah. the artistic side. Mm. You could build a little mini ABC mixer in that sloppy panel. You could. And it would look quite official. <laughs> like those little OB mixers yeah, they used to have, those that's RCA right. ones. They're yeah. pretty, uh, yeah, yep. pretty quirky, aren't they? That's right. Yes, I quite like those. Yeah. Yep. I think if, uh, in fact, the mixers that they used to use in old Hollywood, like you know, for mm. um, Mr. Wells, and you know, they had those. That, they looked a bit like that. They had a, mm. a slopey panel, black with yes. a big meter on them that's and a right. couple of knobs and things. Yes. Yes. The ubiquitous RCA knobs. Yes, that's right. Big knobs. Mm. Not many facilities. I don't think had equalizers. It was just whatever no. came in, <laughs> came in, went out. That's right. Had to be good on the day. Now you've got a fantastic mixer with uh, with big knobbies that uh, Vo uh, Volexian. Uh, yes, I, now I haven't ever used that. I turned it on; it does work. Yeah, but it's pretty useless. In, well, I know, but still, you have to put it in the rack or something. Yeah, yeah. it's got to be in the theatre rack. True, and massive knobs, <laughs> mm. and it's um, beautifully yeah. made inside. Yep, it's just a two. Um, basically high level in, not like mm. um ordinary domestic line in levels okay, and two phono levels okay so there are phono levels as well yeah, so yeah. mic inputs essentially that's right like i think it was designed for people with hi-fi sets to mix their stuff mm. um it wasn't like there's no i don't think it was designed for pa or anything or no, think it just wank people to put them on a big uh, leak amplifier or yeah, something yeah perhaps they were uh, they, they, they feature in some of those bbc um articles i think uh, the broadcast house articles i think there's a a couple of their smaller um regional stations had had a bank of uh, Volexian um oh, really? mixer panels okay, I, yeah. when i did a search on it I, it came up with okay. a couple of uh, studio right. picks but uh, it would they would look very good in your background rack they would yes and yeah. they just line up a few meters behind it and uh, just make them all sort of dance to the tune and it could be a uh, yeah you, you're halfway to <laughs> having your was it three two G A? What's the uh, orange station you've got with the uh, uh, two G Z? Two G Z. Oh, how would it be having <laughs> polished bakelite panels? Yes, yes. Wear, the reflections get of the people panels. in their 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 um their tuxedos. That's always you have to start wearing a dinner suit then. Mm. <laughs> you, 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 have to, you have to start pressing <laughs> your pants, suit. Dave. Oh, you have to press pants. Yes, yes then you can go right. on the coffee break and talk about how you press mm. your pants and yes. uh, and how you uh, you know. <laughs> 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 yes, yeah, that's right. So, um, yeah, you can, um, you can, uh, you can go, go the full way with all the theatrics, all of the stage settings, the lighting. Now, in the, that old, that broadcast house site, they used to use those OB8 amplifiers, which looked a bit like those, those Vortex things. But whatever it is, yeah. yeah. They're pretty ugly devices, weren't mm. they? Not like the Americans of nice mm. Art Deco. Oh, yes. They're like an OB amp stuck in a box, four knobs, yes. a little meter, yes. and terminal, like, looked like crap. But yes, they made whole studios out of them. Yes, very utilitarian. They were like a building block. Yes, yes. Like Lego. Yes, that's yes. it. Mm. Yeah, it's so true. It's a very different design philosophy, isn't it? Compared when you look at the the grandiose yeah. Art Deco mm. overlay and that, all those American designs, mm. there's a certain majesty and we're conquering the world sort of uh, yeah. a look about them, isn't mm. it? Well, I think when they first bought, built the broadcast house, it was like that, mm. and then things happened so fast they just 
stuff stuff in and just they mm. forgot about style mm. and then when the war came mm. it was just shit they just ripped everything out just mm. that picture of the rack room is just crap it's mm. just mm. looks like it was built overnight there's just wires and things poking out everywhere it's yeah. totally unruly yes i mean the u.s would never do that they'd just have a lovely shiny oh that's thing. right they would have had polished lino yes, yes. and uh, <laughs> it just looked like a factory with mm. some racks mm. it almost looks amateurist mm. And the, the desks looked out like the, a little meter stuck here and a knob there. Yeah. Like, it was like... Um, it's very piecemeal, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. It's just been put to, together with sticky tape and mm. uh, blue tack. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. So the... Um, yeah, but what I've noticed looking at these pictures of when I was looking into that uh, Stockhausen thing I put mm. on last night, I was looking at the Radio Cologne, West German Radio, okay. and uh, in Cologne and their setup, they had electronic music studios there, right. and uh, the, the Germans did it. They looked very official. Big, mm. solid construction, everything oh, over-engineered to the yes, hills, all yes. the Telefunken gear. Oh, and, yes. And, um, yes, there's a certain sort of... Uh, very robust, very concrete. <laughs> What's the? What can I type in? Uh, Cologne, C O L O G N or something. C -O -L -O um, Cologne West Ra uh, West German Radio Electric Music Studios. No, how do you spell Cologne again? I don't know. Um, I can't spell. So <laughs> do you know how to like spell? Uh, um, no. Cologne. 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 This is what happens when you get two people who can't spell. Oh. <laughs> so I, I rely on spell checks. Cologne. Yeah, I do too. I'm totally, totally <laughs> non-spelling. C o l o g n e. C l. C o l o g n e. That sounds good. Yeah. G e. And cologne. No, yeah, not perfume. <laughs> West German radio studio. Mm -hmm. um, like electronic electronic music music and um, and you'll probably see some pictures of Mr. Stockhausen Karl Heinz with the, Stockhausen yeah and the here we go there's a few here that have come up and what do we have here WDR if you write, write in WDR, Electronic yeah. Music Studio, okay. then you'll, you'll get things. You'll see their massive graphic equalizers. Okay. Rech Deutsch Rundenfunk. Yeah. <laughs> oh, very good. Well done. Mm -hmm. There's a picture of Mr. Stock. There we are. Oh, yes. Uh, da, da, here. And uh, we'll see if we see a photographic of it. There's a few. Some oh yes, there's a low-frequency pulse generator, all telephone and yeah. uh, keyboardums, the oh. synth vocoder. Oh mm. look, Stockhausen by the custom synth 100. Yes, the WDR studio. He, he looks completely mesmerised. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's on Sirius, actually. He's not here. Yeah. That's, that's a hologram of him. Yeah. Oh. yeah there's, there's a few there. There's one of the early... Uh, um, yeah, under WDR Electronic Music Studio, there's quite a few. And uh, there's one of their early uh, four-track machine. Right. And uh, their banks of oscillators and wave oh, generators. Oh, yes, I see that. that there's four-track tape recorder, a selection of patched wave generators and filters. Mm. Oh, and yeah. they're all... And look at those things, just spool and care and... Yeah. And but they're very heavy-duty. They're just... Yeah. They've got that robust look. There's a, if you keep going, there's a couple of uh, Stockhausen looking into the... Uh, with a nice tannoy speaker behind him. Ah, oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. A few others. Yeah, it'd be nice to have a music studio like that. I could oh, I convert the pool room into it. You <laughs> could. It'd be fun. It would be much more interesting. Well, I mean, look, I think synthesizers are great, but I think um, working with the... Uh, I'd probably get very sick of it. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At the same time, just the intrigue of how understanding the... Uh, the processes that they used to do and, and there's that wonderful story about the Doctor Who theme how they ran the, the tape the tape all the way along the corridors at Motor Vale and oh, uh, really? to, uh, to get the to link get the links yeah. right and um, and there's some great pictures of Stockhausen well I'm looking at a picture here where they've got <coughs> the tape going up and down oh, past the curtains and all that stuff oh okay that's the one I think I was mentioning yeah. there's one with oh yes 
And the yeah. massive graphic is about 10 feet high. Yeah, it's enormous. It's huge. <laughs> <laughs> Big graphic equaliser. Yeah. Yeah. But there's one with, him, with tape all over the room. Have you seen that one? No. Uh, there's one uh, with... It, it, it's sort of on all these little... Um, elevated and, and the tape sort of is uh, extended <laughs> mm. yeah, right across like a clothesline it's amazing but yeah extended mix yes yeah. extended mix that's <laughs> right and pictures of a synthy 100 the big the first of the big synthesizers yeah no wow. look it's a um, I'll have to so much to look at so many pictures but um, yeah, I do like the way the Brits. I like the the knobbies they used with the uh, you, which you could put your whole hand around. Yes, they're like door knobs. That's they how were, they built really, them, I suppose. They're yeah. quintessential knobs, aren't they? Mm. Yeah, the, they're real knobs. They thought we, we need radio knobs. Right, door knob. We'll, we'll just modify a door knob. That's right. Just pull them off the door and put them on. <laughs> and the, and those mixers they had, you know, like and their continuity suite. Yes, yes. In the silence room, they had three big knobs, mm. and you know. Uh, yeah, and they had a different way of fading too. You fade it into a master and you faded that or something, you know. Like yes, that's right. Just everything, to make it complex. Exactly. <laughs> everything had an intermediary stage, didn't it? Yes. It was all sort of uh, layered. Yeah. Ah. Well, wow, this was good. Mm. Lots to, here we go. This is a big picture of the graphic equaliser. Look at it. Mm. Amazing. Yeah. There's, well, there's a good one here. It says Stockhausen Sounds in Space, and there's a stack of pictures on that side. Mm. And you get to see close-ups of the big, the massive graphic with uh, um, one-foot-long sliders. Yeah. Well, very accurate for doing the, the equalisation, I suppose. That's it. the whole idea. Hmm. Yeah. What's interesting? I have it. The Blicker Tree Theremin. Oh right. I'd love to build a theremin. I think it'd be fun to have they're a theremin. They're easy to build. Apparently yeah, they're, they're hard to play. Optimum. I think they're really hard to play. But you all have to do is wave your hand. And yeah. You can get right over very nicely. Yes, you can. You can just sort of um, move your arm in a regular way. Now, there's a whole... St here's a stack of pictures of close-ups of the uh, electronic music, st what's left of it, of their old equipment. And then... Mm. Um, yeah, there's one site here. Stockhausen Pace dot blogspot. Mm. Stockhausen Space dot blogspot dot com. And there's a stack of WDR electronic music studio pictures. Yeah, that, that, that's one of the best, I think, because you've got. It, it goes through each item of equipment. I think I'll sit down and read this later. Okay, and blogspot, is it? Yeah, it's Stockhausen, S T O C K H A U S E N, space, as one word, Stockhausen, space dot blogspot dot com. Stockhausen. Stockhausen, that's S T O C K H A U S E N. Stockhausen, yes, H A U S E N. And then space, as one word, Stockhausen, space. Ah. Dot blogspot.com. And then I'm sure they'll listen to those all about this. Yeah, I'm sure they do. Oh, they'll sound in space, yes. Yeah, so there's there's a whole stack of pictures of um, various items of oh. equipment and some of these scores. And, um, and it's got a picture of the rotating speaker, the rotating table oh. with all the microphones around it. Amazing. Which is a pretty unusual thing. And then the big graphics. Yeah, so they all still exist, and, a, and even a leader, a Heathkit signal generator. No. Oh. Hmm. Yeah. I wonder oh. how much many people used to listen to his stuff. Oh, I think there's a really strong following in, really? in particular mm. circles. Yeah. And all the faders. No, quadrant faders. I like those no. quadrant faders, the painted <laughs> ones where, they, where you shape your hand over them. They were the best. And they had them like Abbey Road, they had them. They had them in Abbey Road and they had them in 3CR. Yep, and they had. <laughs> I, I used those on a, a few desks and the aunties had them. Did they you? were lovely to use. They were. They, been. they were like, they click, you move them and they, mm. um, the little light used to light up. And you, you, I've got one here. Ah. And it's, I sometimes I do, do use it. <laughs> just yes, go up you, and should, down. you should put it on as a master fade or something. I should, shouldn't I? Yes. Yeah, so you can yeah. just have that, that tactile experience. Because yeah. they're designed, they're so ergonomic. So you just they were totally yeah. ergonomic. Hmm. Yeah, and, and they, they weren't, like, they were just studs, they were easy, they didn't wear out or anything, they weren't mm. like those silly um, long fader things. Yeah, yeah. Yes, that's right. So they, um, 
No, they, they're, they're beautifully made things, mm. but mm. so you, you don't see them very often anymore. I think desks with them in are worth a lot of money. I think so. <laughs> I think they're a bit of a premium product. Yes. You see them on those really high-end pie desks and things yeah. like that, yeah. mid-pie desks. Mm. I mean, mm. it'd be nice to make a desk, but to have mm. all the facilities ah. and something you can buy, it's just unbelievable. Yeah. Like, he, he couldn't do it. Yeah, well, look, Laurie's just made a desk, and he's, he? and he's gone to great lengths. It's incredible. It's extraordinary what he's done, but I just don't know how he finds the time. It's no. amazing. Yeah, yeah but um, yeah, building your own desk. You can build a simple one. Well, I built that B ABC one, the rip-off, and it was mm. like, uh, you know, it's just... Trimax mm. faders feeding mm. into an amp or something, but uh, you know, once you well, you customise the big one for your needs. That um, the RCA thing. Yep. Yeah. Uh, the uh, so the AWA thing. Yes. Yeah, Mr. Newbeck Scott. That's right. Well, uh, that was look. That was quite nice to use. Very easy. Click, mm. click. But Until the pins dropped out of the yeah, key. Yeah, the pins and it just had no <laughs> facilities at all. Like <laughs> no, it was pretty uh, stock standard. And I looked at that thing. You know, no queuing. <laughs> that film at three at uh, you know to um three uh, sh uh, sr. Yep. And you know he had so to queue. He he stopped the pins dropping out. He mm. had to queue on the on the channel two. On that's channel what he two. did. That's right. I mean, <laughs> so if you wanted, you couldn't use channel two because it was a queue channel. <laughs> that's right. So it's basically a single channel mixer. It is a single channel mixer, exactly. No, you're very limited. Yeah, and uh, hmm. <laughs> but the sound, uh, that little aluminium speaker was always very good. Hmm. And hmm. announcers would poke pencil, so it was all, hmm. you know, distorted, so it had that, that, <laughs> that, that clip sound. Yes, that's right. Yeah. And the uh, emergency key, did you also have yes. an emergency yes, key? Yes, it did, so yes. Sw yep. Switches over the line amps. That's right, in case one pops. That's right, and a utility key as well. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you can wire it up to what you want. Whatever you like. That yeah. was the uh, thing. I mean, I suppose it was just a bit simple, but mm. they're incredibly complex for what they do in underneath. Mm. There's wires and relays and things yeah, everywhere. Yeah, like the cards and the oh, way the loom is yeah. positioned in yeah. is quite congested, really. Mm. Yeah. They probably could have done it in a simpler way. Those ones in your that book you got today, they were nice. They oh, were they're ones. beautiful. Yeah. They're, they're, but uh, again, they're very, well, they're very the modular, yeah. and they used proper uh, pots in them. As they used yeah. uh, a, a stepped attenuators. Yeah. And uh, they're, they're very nicely made. Yep. They're, that that would be fun to to have. Oh on. yes, you need a I do really need an auxiliary studio for for, for yeah. retro stuff. Oh yes, yeah, most definitely. Production or just an on-air studio. Y yes, yes, that's right. The uh, so yes, and those RCA units, I think everything was sort of floating in them. All of the preamps and things were on grommets, and they were really, sort of isolated, yeah. mechanically isolated as well. Mm. And um, and I think they were the first to contain all the preamps and everything in the one big module. Yes. Whereas the Brits had it all externalised. No, and cables to mm. go wrong between the thing, a power supply, and one rack amp mm. preamps, another the mixing thing on the desk. Well, that's what the ABC had too, wasn't it? It was. Yeah, they mm. just followed that way. Everything had to go to the switch. Room to be mm. controlled and go back up there, God. and like it was really just a, a, a job creation program mm. that you had to have all these technicians soldering IDF strips and wiring and patch mm. panels in about ten different places for the program to go through. Mm. Then there was a chance someone was going to poke something in a hole somewhere mm. and not let the program go through from one side of the studio to the other. So then I had to work out who's put something in some hole somewhere down in some control room, mm. switch room, something. Yeah. It was just yeah. uh, so um, over-designed, I think. Mm. I think so. And it's, it's not a very intuitive sort of process. No. It's much better to have um, all your main utilities in one module mm. rather than having to have uh, fly lines everywhere. Yeah, so if one thing pops, well, it can move, it, it mm. move to another place. Mm. I think it was designed by telephone technicians, mm. and that's the way they did TV, uh, telephones. Mm. Mm back in 1920, and sort of, uh, they kept that sort of philosophy. Yeah, it was a carry-on from that. Mm. Yeah. But I suppose, could they, how, how was it for switching between different studios? Did they, or they, they just would have all had their own tie line, uh, own line, I suppose? Well, it was done with that real, uh, the mm. uni selector With thing. the uni selectors, yeah. 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 And, yeah. like, say, I remember, if you, in one of those little control rooms, you wanted to plug a roller into a tie line mm. to go from one side of the booth to the other side of the booth, mm. what you do 
say it was tie line one from one side of the booth to the other, mm. you'd plug it in tie line one on one side of the booth, mm. you'd ring up switch room, get them to patch tie line one of studio 302 to go to tie line three on the left side of the wall. What? So they weren't even connected. You had to ring oh. up switch rooms so they could connect them together. Oh, how ridiculous. Yes. <laughs> so you just got an extension lead, a yeah. two-pronged extension, exactly. and did it like that. And just had things going across yes. the floor. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that incredible? It says everything. Of course, then they'd come up and say, You've, you, that's an unofficial patch. You have to mm. do official patches and have it programmed in, <laughs> in the patch booking room. Mm. Book. So, you know. <laughs> that's right. It doesn't meet, uh, the, meet the, the uh, standard protocols. No. So it goes half a mile to get there. Mm. It's going to, you know, all the noise is crackling noise, and mm. the, 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 the pulse clock used to click, mm. and the talking clock was breaking through, and, mm. you know, all this sort of stuff. Mm. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. That's incredible, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. What a what a uh, what redundancy. <laughs> the basic that was it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Go. Oh, what a waste. But um, okay. Look, they had lots of people had to do so. You know, they'll keep people. Fifty people, people to do work. That's right. To, to keep people busy, they would have been. Everyone would have had a uh, a triage or a rating or a. Yes, uh, that's you right. know, you would have had your top level uh, technician and then your class two, Super three, four, techs five. and the acting techs. And yes. So and you probably had a special coat with an emblem on it if, yes. you, if you had the uh, you know, primacy. And when we first went there, they're just people were addressed by their numbers, their names, <laughs> you know, super tech ops, something or other. He had no idea. It took a year to understand what they were and who was important, You're who wasn't. Is that true? Yes. Isn't that incredible? Yes. Oh, dear. The super amazing. and the uh, rat ops. Um, <laughs> what were some of them? The uh, <coughs> oh, this sounds like Star Trek. <laughs> it sounds a bit like that. <laughs> Always silly names for people. Um, Rados, <laughs> like seven. <laughs> it is. Um, okay. Deferos. Oh yes, well, there, would been, there would have been a few of Davros's, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they had all these these names. Mm. Yes. Um, well, in your video, there's a gentleman there who opens up the panel. He probably had this special role of opening up the panel. That would have been that's his right, job. That's right. Yes. And uh, no, and uh, he looked like he was very official. Mm. In a he, white coat, class class one technician, Davros class or something. Something like that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, had to go up there and they go up the ladder. Mm. And seniority had a lot to do with it, of course. Mm. So there, there are certain things you, no one could touch. So if you had, if you were, or how did you sort of get around those sort of issues? So was it sort of very mm. union based? It was union based. Mm. I remember when they had a, um, there was a PMG had a strike, mm. and they. Uh, they weren't fixing any landlines and stuff, mm. and, and the main landline to Sydney for you know for Radio National failed or something. Okay. And oh, we'll just have to put tone on because there's no program coming from Sydney. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 naively, I used the spare FM line from Sydney and patched Radio National down it, or it wasn't called Radio National. Ah. Did shit hit the fan? Oh really? <laughs> it wasn't compliant. No. You couldn't do that because you're circumventing the union oh, thing, of course. Okay. And I thought, well, there's two perfectly good landlines that yeah. have been used. Right. We'll just use that, and if the FM needs them, we'll put them back eventually. <laughs> but you couldn't do that type of thing. Oh, golly, mm. isn't that incredible? But I do remember there was um, uh, uh, one of the uh, studio supervisors. Uh, mm. I've had said this story before, but it's, mm. it's, it's a good one. Mm. There was um, an important thing coming up in the cricket you know, they're going mm -hmm. to be bold, I don't understand, really important. Okay. At the same time, Parliament was on. Mm. And, of course, 3LO had cricket and Parliament, and Parliament overran because something really important was happening in Parliament. Okay. So, obviously, um, Parliament took preference, mm. but most people would be wanting to listen to the cricket. Okay. And there was a time when they had 3 double Z on, mm. or it wasn't, it was on during the night or something, but not during the day. And he... He just said, OK, we'll get the 3 double Z transmitter turned on and we'll patch it down that line. <laughs> and he made an announcement before the Parliament took over that the cricket was now going to continue on 1270 or whatever it was. Right. And uh, if you <laughs> want to listen to the cricket, you can listen to it there. So they did it. And they did it. And he, I think he was near retirement age, so he didn't care. So he, did he lose his job? He didn't, but there were questions asked. I bet there were. Yeah. <laughs> that he was using a, 
transmitter that was licensed to the ABC, you know. <laughs> They could do what they want with it, oh, God, and uh, he did what you know. He, he thought, well, just took his own initiative. All the listeners wanted to listen to the cricket. We okay. put it on. So cricket took <laughs> brain surprise. Isn't that incredible? Yes. What a what a what what a hu hubris! Mm. Incredible. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, if he's close to retirement age, that could be his parting gesture, I suppose. That's right. Yeah. Why not? Run so uh, it just shows. See, mm. you have to think along the um, you know the. Uh, Think about what what's the whole purpose of the organisation. Mm, definitely, it raises all sorts of questions. Yeah, to supply you know entertainment information for people who want them. Mm, yeah, it does. It's a. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot of uh, animated discussion about that one. That's right. <laughs> but yes, all the names are just ridiculous. Yeah, roles. Mm. I imagine it would have been very middle heavy. Yeah. Mm. Oh, well, I'll, I'll have to uh, get it, dig up an old book. Uh, an old pamphlet and read out some of the, the, the names that they're called. Mm. Um, no, I'd yeah. like to hear that. I'd be fascinated to know what the uh, what, what the rate, uh, how the hierarchy was determined mm. and, and what the uh, various roles were. And, and what, they kept what having do. reorgs every couple of years, so they'd all change. All the mm. names would change. Mm. <laughs> so did it meant that some people would just never. They may have been had multiple specialities, but just were now un unable to express them because of uh, the containment of their job description. To some extent, it was breaking down when I was there. Right. As it should have, because mm. things they got talk back. You know, they mm. never had talk back. Yeah. Um, and yeah, there was more complexity. In yeah, those. They, more they relied on people to be. Yeah, and like a lot of the rules, them. like you were never allowed to play a cassette on air. Right. You'd have to get it transferred in the, in the dubbing suite to a roller tape and all stuff before. <laughs> okay. But then sometimes they had to play a cassette. They just mm. put a cassette in the studio and they mm. played it. Mm. And there was a big uproar that you know you can't play substandard stuff. Well, they had mm. they had rollers that had bad heads and off asthma sounded muffled as anything. Yes. And the cassette was far better than that. Yes. <laughs> yes. So. Yes. I can I, I can well imagine. Yes, some pretty tired rollers by the end of the day. I mean. Yes. <laughs> So uh, they then you know there, there's a, there's resistance of course yes. there's a resistance movement to, to progress. Oh yes. But maybe you can't progress too far. But mm. it, it was moving along. Hmm. Yeah. So they did stupid things like uh, <coughs> the the roster would change during halfway through a program. Like Richard Coombe and Kennedy, mm. the roster would change halfway through the program. Another person would come in the booth. What? And they said, look, we want the same person. Oh, you can't do that because the rostering and, oh, you know, and the lunch breaks and things. crazy. <laughs> and they said, we want continuity, you know, the same. Yeah. So all those stupid things. Yeah. Like, the, the operations were so, was completely separate to the production side, really. Yeah. And it should have been, you know... Yeah, it should have been in line, at least yeah. with the programming, God. But I think, like, before my time in the 50s, it must have been so much worse. Apparently. It would have been terrible. Like, I think the... Before, see, originally the AB, the, the PMG had all control of technical operations mm. and maintenance, and the ABC had the announcers and production people, mm. and never the two, like, one sat in yeah. one booth beside, and the other sat on the other side of the yeah. glass, mm. and they never, like, there was very little communication between mm, them. That's ridiculous. And, like, one couldn't go into the other side, the, 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 the operator couldn't go into the studio and the studio person couldn't come into the booth unless mm. they were invited. Mm. So... No wonder radio sounded so static and exactly. one-dimensional. And it was like, uh, apparently that broke down mm. eventually because the, the, then the ABC took control of everybody, the PMG, mm. um, and PMG people basically moved over and worked the ABC. Mm. So uh, then they had to, the ones that were, you know, didn't like that, well, they, they could leave, mm. but they all had, they had to be part of the team sort of thing. Mm. Mm. And that was, uh, you know, a much better idea. Yeah. And they had some input to the programs, it weren't just a knob mm. twiddler without, mm. not any concept of where the program's going, what yeah. the, the, the aim of it is. They, sure. they had to sort of be part of it. Mm. So I think that was a big thing. I think it happened in the early 60s, that yeah, breakdown. Yeah. So did people like Evans, did he sort of communicate much about what his game plan was? Did, was there ever a sort of an overlay or a, a particular, you know, mm. would he say, oh, look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to muck around with this or I'm going to... Did he ever sort of... No, he, look, he, he wouldn't tell you what he would just do stuff he he, he liked mm. a, he liked a, an operator who was who was taking part in the show yeah and was interested in what he was doing yeah 
And he would talk to them, yeah. as you know. Yes, that's right. And he'd like that two-way uh, conversation. Mm. He, he, if he had someone who just sat there and read the newspaper and didn't take notice, he, he would get annoyed and get, yeah. get them changed. Yes, yes. He wanted someone who actually inputting and maybe even telling a few things that he, he could pass mm. on or mm. yeah, be like a mini producer, well, read see, stuff out of the paper and say, look, this yeah. is a good joke, say it or something. Yeah, yeah. So he was sort of, he, he liked that sort of family. He did, cause, yeah. Because it, it always came across as being sort of, uh, mm. you were invited into, you know, the, <laughs> the, yeah. the ABC family. He was always talking show. about Jonesy. Mm. And uh, you know other people like that. Yeah. So yeah, he was uh, he, he was uh, he was not quite communicative, mm. uh, communicative. Mm. And I don't know how he dealt when the old because he was there in the PMG days. Mm. But um, maybe uh, you know it's sort of uh, um, you know he um, had a uh, you know a rapport with them. Yeah, sure. Even though uh, he probably got. There probably some techos were more interested in, in, in being part of the production than others. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some just wanted to work eight hours a day, sit in front of a booth and just do nothing and, you know, mm. tune out and just turn the thing. Yeah, or well, he would have liked an audience at least. Yeah. <laughs> well, he, see, the audience, Mary Adams was the same. She yeah. she looked into the booth, you were the audience, yeah. and she'd say yeah. something, see she'd how... she talking to you, effectively. Yeah, see how you react to it. Yeah. See, that's interesting, isn't it? I think that's a lot to be said for having that, even if it's just a body language interaction. Yeah, that's right with people just mm. to sort of know if you're mm. actually getting through that's right yeah and if you're entertaining the person in the booth it must be pretty good yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they typically they'd have they'd have the producer and <coughs> they'd also have a technical person as well um, most shows didn't have a producer maybe right. uh, there's only very few the only ones that had a producer later on were like the morning shows okay um, um because there was so there was had mm. to be somebody you know a answering phone calls and yes, stuff yes um, but generally, like Evans never had a producer, um, okay. and the morning shows only started having producers in a really bit before fame, really. Oh, really? When, when Talkback came in, they needed someone, uh, yeah. a separate person to answer calls and vet the calls. Yes. And uh, before that, it was really a, a one-man show. Mm. Um, okay, yeah. that's mm. interesting. I had no idea. Mm. I was wondering about that. Yeah. yeah. So how about Cargo? Would he, would he just do it on his own? They had, well, he, he saw in that, that video. That's clip. right, there's a couple of people on the Yeah, they had a couple of people on there. On the Astor desk. Uh, there was, like, the operator. Yeah. And there was, there was a, they had Carga. Yeah. There was a Grams operator, because Carga wasn't qualified to run turntables. <laughs> <laughs> so he'd sit in there, and he'd either sit there and, and out, announce, and yeah. someone would roll the, rec the, the yeah. records. Yeah. And uh, there'd be an operator in the booth, and often a... Uh, a production assistant who would keep a uh, have a stopwatch and keep mm. an eye on times and yeah. stuff like that. Yep. Like he did the research and mm. the, um, the creative bit, mm. but he needed someone just to make sure it was all going well, to work and fill in the app reforms. Because he, he was so spontaneous, he seemed to, uh, it didn't seem like he was reading, and often he it, his dialogue seemed to be quite sort of, uh, you know, yeah. immediate. Mm. But uh, evidently it was all very highly... Yeah, know. we'll see, they were done... Uh, were they pre-recorded? They were pre-recorded. Oh. All this stuff was pre-recorded. Right. I know it wasn't that example we saw on the yeah, thing, yeah. but uh, I was wondering... I don't, think he, uh, I don't think he ever did any live shows. Oh, I right. think it was so all pre-recorded. They could all cut it down to size yeah. then. Yeah, okay. so he was never there like you know, Saturday mm. or Sunday mm. or whatever. Sure. Uh, and like, you know, um, <laughs> Dr. Floyd, he was certainly pretty cool. He certainly was. They went out to his house with, yes, the, they <laughs> with the Pyrox. And that was a Nagra, wasn't it? Nagra, yes. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think... Got his big cue cards. All yes, that's up. right. Mm. Uh, yeah, so, uh, and um, like, uh, I think um, John, uh, know, the, um, Graham Evans, uh, mm -hmm. Kaleidoscope, or not, what, what was it called? Round, uh, had a, like a, a lightish yeah. afternoon program. That was pre recorded, and one day right. they did five programs. Okay, so they do a whole stack and yeah. then they sort of run them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so those people would only be employed on a pretty casual well, well, I think he was employed seven days a week, but it was. Yeah. The rest of the time he was in the booth and Rip and Lee or something, you know, okay. so it's just like. He, he had other jobs. He did. One day went in there and recorded all those programs. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I think, uh, you know, it loses a bit. Mm. Um, the, the, like jo um, uh, so what, yeah, how many things were reliably went to air live then? I well, mean, the breakfast shows, yeah, yeah. Um, the morning shows, the, okay. um, 
the Mary P, Adams, the PM elected news stuff, of the, course, the, and PM. Yeah, and yeah, and yeah the the afternoon shows, the drive time shows. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it was but only the country hour and all those sort of programs. They were live. Oh, they were live too. Yep, yep. They had pre-recorded inserts of the mm. uh, you know news items and stuff, but okay. th they were done live. Yeah. Um, there was only like the Sunday afternoon, like the the. Mm. The big music programs yeah, on the three AR type programs. And yeah, stuff. those things were mm. pre-recorded. Okay. Um, so mm. yeah, I think it was just um, mm. the, the the way they did them. Yeah. They, it would have meant you'd have to have someone coming in in the same time every day for five days. Yeah. It's just quicker. Yeah. But that, see that the afternoon shows, the, the normal shows, they relied on current news to talk about, so mm. you couldn't pre-record no, the after the drive couldn't. time or something. That's right. But like. Uh, the, the, the roundabout music show or something mm. that could be recorded mm. because they didn't mention in any um, current mm. affairs or whatever. Mm. So how about queuing up all the news items? I mean, obviously they they play to air interviews and uh, there's a lot of um, you know material associated with the news. That's all going to be timed and sculptured and contained. So you'd get the you get the running order of the brief. You'd have all of the tape machines all primed up and and that would be your job. And basically, you just uh, work to that. Well, uh, in, it's all changed now. Just press buttons on yeah. the screen. Yeah, yeah, so it's all sort of. But it was that. like uh, those news programs. They'd come in and they would have a roll you know, a seven-inch tape mm. with paper marks in it. Mm -hmm. And you'd spool like they'd ever have the the the, the um, if they're really if they're really with it. They they put them on cartridges, take cartridges in the studio. I was wondering if they'd do that. But they never had time. Like mm -hmm. the country hour, they just Bill Quadding would run in, throw a tape to you mm. with different um, mm -hmm. uh, bits of paper stuck in the roller. Oh, the so thing. you'd have to be quickly. Uh, and he'd say, up "Oh, we'll have the... item number three. So he'd spool through and hope you got you didn't miss the tape thing oh, and play geez. it. And so so you'd, you'd have to you work to these little bits of paper stuck in there. That's right. Yeah. God. And there was meant to be a rundown sheet, but it was mm. never then they had time to fill it in properly. So mm. it's really they just tell you to do over the intercom, you know, we'll have this take or that take. And you might know that later in the same news item, you'd have to be in a different position on the tape. That's right, yeah. So you'd, it's a bit yeah. of pressure. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 it could be quite hard. Mm. And they'd maybe give you the end words or the start words so you know it's the right thing. Yeah. Often, if they had a bit of paper, they said, item number three starts with, you know, Mr Howard, what do you think about whatever? Uh, okay. So you could tell if the so right you thing. So you could actually cross-check it. Yeah. To the, yeah. Uh, to but the they often didn't have that. Okay. And they'd just say, oh, the, the, the second yeah. tape of, you know, right. of, uh, of Crean on the, the yeah. talking about the, yeah. the, the, uh, the, you know, the imports or whatever. Sure. We'll play that one. Yeah. So, yeah, it was, um, it could be quite, uh, quite tricky. You had to really mm. get good at spooling the, <laughs> spooling a roller, not on air, mm. with enough pressure on the thing to hear it but not screaming so you're popping your, the, exactly. the speaker yeah yeah absolutely <laughs> and they're great for that you could just you could mm. just go reverse and forward so so yeah. quickly yeah you could just find your spot and then hit bang and, and there it was mm. so yes that was um, okay yeah that's a um it's a, it'd be interesting you should do a bit on that on on the on on fast production using yeah, that's on right. the uh, the roller virtuoso mm, yeah, yeah you know you, you've got your you have uh, music virtuosos you could do the uh, <laughs> roller virtuoso yeah, yeah, play, yeah play the roller well that, that <laughs> photograph of roller publicity of the guy in three who's had about 10 rollers around that's right the race, i've seen that picture racing. that's fantastic yeah. yeah yeah but it would be good to sort of see the fast editing the fast mm. spooling that sort of um you know there's, there's a real craft in in being able to sort of managed tape I think and in that sort of way well I think earlier on it was even harder with acetate discs they oh, did the God, same yeah. thing with that they would have done too yeah. and uh, you know it'd be very hard to uh, mm. queue up or so with the, yeah with with the buyers they wouldn't have done a fast queue with an acetate on mm. it they'd have to just back back go back a bit and and just rely on the uh, on the talk you'd have to have a little bit of a gap because there's always a, a bit of an uptake on a roller um, oh, no, buyer. Buyer. I think if they're in good, like if you have them in gear, mm -hmm. and you turn the, the, what they did, they had the keys on the, the studio. The the, the the broadcast key would actually turn the motor on. Right. So what they would do, they'd cue it up, just turn it back a fraction. Yeah. In put it in gear, mm. and then when they need it, push the button, and mm. it'll be it'll be on within half a second. 
Okay. Yeah, that's interesting. So what I'm doing with the, <laughs> that, <laughs> my crazy, what the, um, the, the, with that um, acetate last night I played, I, um, I've got a power switch on the oh, preamp. Yes, I've got yeah. one of those PKE amps. So I, I queued it up, gave myself about uh, half a rotation, you know, um, lead in, yeah. had the power off and then um, but brought it up. But I, I think the uh, motor's a little bit slow on the uptake. Yeah. Yeah. So I just had to use a fader as well. But yeah. it sort of worked last night, but um, sort yeah. of getting the, <laughs> the feel of that. Well, the buyer here, in fact, it, it's... It, Yours is still pretty fast? Yeah, if I put it in gear, mm -hmm. it, it's almost instant start. Is it? In fact, I'll, okay. I'll do a test. Yeah, do a testicle. And... Uh, Oh, there's dust, so much dust on this um, mm. walk in the black forest. It's, it's the test. It's <laughs> yeah, the... Uh, yeah. Oh, look, there's, I haven't used it for so long. Mm. Now, if I Q-matic it up and um, turn it on, and... Uh, oh, the $2 coin falling off. Mm. Oh, there we are. Oh, you'll be skating away. Yeah, yeah, no. Now, if we... Uh, Now that's back mm, a quarter of a turn. Okay. And I'll turn the motor off. And it's still in gear, so mm. it's a quarter of a turn and I'll you'll hear the click of the switch and you'll hear how soon the music starts. Oh that's pretty good. And if I do it like in music you'll find out so mm. I'll turn it on. Yeah. See they're pretty good. It's pretty good actually very fast. Mind you, the SP10s are faster. Yes, yes, the SP10 is very good. No, I, I, I'm <coughs> very confident using that. But if I was to do the same, see, we could have a bit of a bio fest here. Yeah. I can do the same thing. <laughs> and uh, I've got this uh, concert. So if I just switch this on. And, In, but it's a little bit of a hasn't got a very definitive start, but so here we go. We switch on now. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a bit of an yeah, 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 yeah. It's probably. I think it's see, just, this is not a cast machine, though. So I think it's, it's the um, the tension of the. You've got to get the tension right between the rubber and the wheel. Yeah. And uh, if you do that, they're okay. Those um, CE, the 10 inch, uh, 12 inch turntables, they're even faster if they're in good condition. They're, they're, uh, almost, okay. they're almost totally instant. Mm. And of course, they have that, that wheel that pulled itself in, they've got the intermediate wheel. That's right. They Whereas do. Whereas these would just rely on the squeaky thing at the end. They do. Yeah, that's right. No, it's a, uh, the uh, art of queuing. Yeah. Mm. See, I think in the days of acetates, the, the, the speed was less, though ex people expected mm. slight gaps between stuff. Yes. But in the 60s, it started yeah. becoming fast and the rollers mm. were really important. That's right. Grantley D certainly had pace yeah. in his shows. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, with all his gestures. <laughs> <laughs> Poor turntable oh, man. I know. Being conducted. Oh. Like, he's like a conductor. Yes, that's right. Yeah. But uh, no, the, the art of queuing, the art mm. of the... It's the, all the gone turn, now. Well, I think it, it is a lost art. Just push a screen. It's like stone masonry. It's all sort of being lost. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. that, that, that would yeah. be a, a good video, the art of, um, of queuing and, uh, and radio production. It's like, I've, I've got no interest in sport, but doing the sporting panels on, uh, on 2RG, it, it was quite a buzz because mm. you had to listen in split cans yep. and go to different stuff without, in the least possible time, and you, you hear one guy finishing mm. and then the other guy about to start, and you might say, you know, it's 10 o'clock, he'll go to so-and-so and you switch over there, mm. and you do it nicely on the queue and no missed words and things. Sure. It was really quite busy for a couple of hours. Yeah, I imagine it would have been. You'd have to be really focused. Mm. Yeah, you'd have to be sort of almost preempting what other people are going to do. You'd That's have to, right. You'd have to be in that sort of state of flow. Yeah, it would be interesting to sort of observe that. Yeah. I often thought shows like Hey Hey, imagine yeah. being at the front of, of a program like that, such oh. pace. It's hard. I don't know how they do it. Yeah. And 
you know, and you've got a big mixer, you could easily turn up the wrong knob. I'm hopeless with mixers. I, I don't. I'm always doing the wrong thing. Yeah, and it would be. It would be quite difficult. I, I, there is a video of the guy doing hey hey, mm. and it's it's just it's manic. Yeah, yeah. It's it's full mm. on. You've got to know where your cartridges are. For yeah, sound and they're just and constantly things. loading cart. Yeah, and just one hand on the on the desk, and then just fast moving and shuttling. Yeah, and uh, I just don't know how they can manage something so immediate because they always have this sprite sound effect for a particular moment yeah, within yeah. half a second yeah and um I, you remember that guy had all that remember all the cart machines in the garage yes, which went right. to mr o'neill yeah, yeah. and um he was the uh, the uh, it wasn't the first hey hey guy he was the second one but he was uh, he had showed me this yeah. wall of carts with all of the oh. spring effects and things and yeah in that video he had w basically though just right there and he knew exactly what was in each lot well, would have been a hundred carts on the wall but they all had a particular purpose and he knew he had this quick way of accessing so you could almost access a cart without looking yep yeah you'd have to do that you yep. just would and play uh, by by ear mm. you know yeah yeah i mean it's a uh, it's a, it's fascinating it's a real it's a real craft i reckon yeah, and uh, and queuing up a, a Mark One that that had its own idiosyncrasies, oh, didn't it? Oh yes, that's right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like a lot of skills, new skills come in, of course. Mm. Um, so, but yeah, I suppose it's, it's no point. Um, you know, it's just totally different things. Yeah, it's just, of uh, course. I mean, it's a different era, different things, but yep. it's uh, but they are sort of lost arts, and it is lost art. And the you know, same with film editing, cutting the real film mm. and stuff, and uh, like. Yeah, doing sound on film must be. Oh, a really that was a very complex thing. It must really be, was. Yeah, because I notice on the little Nagra I've got here, there's a, a little strobey thing. Yeah. And uh, so there must have been a real sort of uh, business about synchronising. Well, if you had the crystal lock, like if you didn't have the synchronising, you'd have to, you know, do a, a slate and all that stuff. Mm. But if the camera was crystal locked mm. and the Nagra was, you'd hit the Nagra, and when that little mm. radiation light flapped, yep. it meant it was in sync, and then you could. Oh, um, right. The thing to be locked from that time on okay and then of course that had to be taken back mm. like if it's just sound on the film mm -hmm. it wasn't so hard because you could just um what they do rarely they play the whole thing they they transfer that to another track edit it mix effects in mm. and then put it back on a set mag thing to be played with a film okay but it's recorded on the nagra then you have to take the nagra to the magnusync room mm. <laughs> wow and then you'd play the tape and it would be synced up and be, be transferred to the 16 mil magnetic tape mm. that could then be cut on the, um, the Steinbeck, um, Steinberg, whatever it is, mm -hmm. with in line with the uh, the sync of the film. Right. So you'd um, and sometimes I had to say had six plate ones with six magnetic tracks, Gosh. music, narration, like a four corners or something. It'd be like that. Incredibly oh, complex. Yeah, you could do been. it on, in, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. Premiere Pro or something. Absolutely, it's hard enough on that. Pro tools or something, yeah. And they had to have the, the vision synced with the um, mm. with the uh, with the soundtracks. Mm. And then they'd mix it all down to um, to one soundtrack, and it would be played on air, mixed out with a separate soundtrack mm. playing with the uh, this film. Okay. And they had this big rotor sync thing. They had these big racks i think there's a photo of you that book there the rca book those big mm -hmm. racks with big 16 mil soundtrack things yes yes and they might have six of them mm -hmm. and a quarter track tape and the film and they'd all be they'd hit this button and they'd clunk they'd all inter interlock together right. play together via mag sync type things okay there's a special room called the the rotor sync room it was just really? jenny motors synced up and all the smell of burning rubber and stuff oh, right. and it controlled this whole thing how extraordinary and you'd turn a knob on these all these machines you know, woo, 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 like a roller spooling right. and they'd be controlled by one knob and they'd yep. all spool and stuff together and they'd all interact yep oh. and then <laughs> man this is so extraordinary and then they'd go if they needed narration and stuff they had this room it was like a theaterette they yeah. had a big it was a nice desk it had um i think an altec lamp two big altec lansing speakers right. i've got the amplifiers here actually ah really <laughs> two big Al altec yeah. amps yeah yeah an altec desk beautiful a bit like the one i've got here it had red knobs and things on it yes with, with all um equalizers and things right and they played psychedelic. he was psychedelic and they had a big screen up and they had this bio booth with 35 and 16 mil projectors they put the soundtrack on yeah and that would link back 
they'd sync it up to this mag sync room to all these tapes mm. on the wall in another room. Okay. And they'd hit the go button and it would all go up to speed. Right. And the guy would then mix the... Um, he'd do the, it on the fly, he'd, would he? He'd do it on the fly and they'd have... The, they had this little asbestos booth, a little tiny hole in the wall where this voiceover person would sit with, a, I think, an RCA mic or something hanging down. Okay. And he'd, with all this asbestos hanging out of the ceiling. <laughs> and it was only about, you had to bend down, it was a ter terrible thing. Mr. Olbeck used to work in there, he'd tell you about it. Right. And he'd look through this glass panel and you'd do the narration and look at the film and read your script at the same have time. you to be acoustically isolated from all the mechanical noise. That's right. And... The guy would mix down the voice and the, the sound effects and the mm. music and stuff, and it, they'd make a mistake, they'd roll back. God, and if you made a mistake, it, it would be so much... Yeah, so, uh, it was a horrific... Yeah. A horrific, at a, to do like a... Oh, what pressure. A, 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 even a reasonably simple program, mm. like mm. even a, a 7.30 report program, mm. was, if they wanted the voice, a bit of music, mm. some actualities, mm. it was a terribly complex thing to do. Oh, goodness me. Did you ever, were you ever working in that sort of domain? Was that no, that was, <laughs> that was the film, film department. Okay. Yes, so they you had to be a film area to work right, on that. Okay, you had to have a different uh, badge. That's right. Yes, <laughs> different colour go coat. <laughs> and when I went electronic, of course, it was done. It was still complex, but could be done a bit easier. They must have relished that that time when uh, yeah, new technology came in. Because when they like video cassettes, um, yeah. beta cam and stuff, or yep. Umatics before, you had two track. Mm. You, you could record two tracks on the actual machine mm -hmm. on the field recording. Yep. And then when you had your two machines mixing, you could actually have, they had a little mixer there. Mm -hmm. You could actually do that mixing in real time between the two things, play a roller into it, some cartridges or whatever. Oh, okay. So it was a bit simpler. Mm -hmm. It was still pretty complex, mm. but nothing like this big theatre you had to sit in with these big... It had to be blasting through these big speakers. Right. And the film could have used to go backwards and forwards all the time trying to get it right and it yeah. always gets scratched. And, oh, you know, <laughs> How about that? It's so full on. What a process. It was totally... Yeah. Uh, it's hard to even get a grasp on, a, on mm. something of that complexity. Yep. So would they, would they have a team of people sort of working on this? Or oh, yeah, they had to have... Uh, well, apart from the camera and the sound guy went out to shoot it, yep. you'd have... In, you'd have a, when you started in the film department in sound, you'd start in that room where they... Mm. with the racks of stuff so you'd put mm. the big tapes the 16 mil um, sprocketed tapes on the machines the quarter track machine on a synced up machine to go mm -hmm. that and you dub it across and you'd be in charge of that making sure all the tapes were okay and working properly and in sync okay. in that room yep. then the mixer guy he was also involved mm -hmm. and you had the uh, someone in the buyer box running the, the, the uh, making sure the projector was okay mm. so probably four or five people to do that mix down and plus that. the journo who would be yeah the talent is maybe a producer yeah. with the mixer guy and the talent in mm. the uh, in the bio box man what a business yeah <laughs> it's incredible it's it is yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, so you you actually were when you first started us to working this way oh yeah they they had film till um well, like some programs had film up until, you know, mid eight, late, late 80s. Yeah, I mean, one of your mm. uploads, you've got the last of the telecine That's of right, things. yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Um, mm. yeah, gosh, before Betacam, wow, what a revelation that must have been. Uh, and, uh, of course, then they'd, they'd dub it all down to that... They'd, the, they'd rush in about two minutes before it's meant to go to where they'd rush down the corridor with mm. the film in two cans the film can and the mm. sound can mm. and you had to lace up the film mm. on the picture start um, mm -hmm. thing and lace up the sound on the picture start thing as well mm. hit the lock button so that the t picture and sound would be locked in mm. and you'd um, they'd be played together okay and there was oh. no fast forward it was, no. it was either forward or reverse normal speed. Right. You couldn't spool them if the, you had to... If you had an issue. Yep. So if they got out, out of sync, sync... They just had to stay out of sync. For basically. Them. Or you'd, you'd fade to black, they'd put a standby item on you and work out what's going on. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh gosh, so you could only move in real time. Well, wh I when suppose. I first started, yeah. I was at Kennet. There's a program about Kennet, a news item about, about Kennet. Yep. And on the desk they had a button for playing off the sound head on the film, the, the, mm -hmm. the magnetic track on the film, 
or off the separate mag player. Mm. Mm. And I must have hit the, instead of off the edited track, I hit the... Um, the soundtrack, the the, the oh. live, the, the raw sound. Oh, okay. And it was all okay, mm. except, you know, when mm. it cut to something else and he's walking up, and they say, oh, I walk this way, do this, you know, and, and mm. Ken is, oh, this guy's a real F with, you know, and, and mm. all this was going on. This is pretty you know, radical soundtrack. <laughs> and it, it was, of course, what wasn't meant to be there. It wasn't supposed to be there. It was a bit that they, they'd take off that soundtrack to put in the main soundtrack. <laughs> okay. Okay. And because uh, oh, I was funny. playing the raw off, off film track. Yes, yes, yes. You're playing the different source. Yeah. Oh, blimey. Mm, yeah. Well, that could, that could have disastrous consequences. <laughs> it could. If it was a really far, like something really um, happening and they had to do it really quickly, yeah. they would just take it off the soundtrack. Right. And the newsreader would read bits between it. Okay. Like to fill in the gaps of whatever that the brief script. So it was actually mixed on the live yes yes but generally uh the more uh, the, the, the items were mixed down to a, a separate track okay yeah yeah so reporters doing live interview that'd be done that'd be a one-step process wouldn't it no. yeah they just they just cut like you know they just cut out the, the best yeah. takes and put yeah. that on and, and just, just yeah. slice it in yeah so yeah. hopefully there's nothing bad yeah. left on the sure the soundtrack <laughs> But it's a very involved process. It's really know. convoluted, isn't it? Yeah, it's like you had to have a person in Telecine running it, a person, four people are producing the, the, the film after yeah. it came in. And mm. not, not to mention, the film had to go to the processing lab beforehand. Oh, right. I mean, they had to come back in time to take it down to Cinevex yeah. to be processed. So is that all on site? Or is it no, they... When, in the black and white days, they had their own processing lab. Okay. But when colour came, it was deemed too complex, and they mm. they outsourced it to Citivex down the road, just where the, okay. the theatre near that the the, uh, the theatre in uh, Glen Hintley Road. Oh yes, yes, yes. Um, yep. What's it called? The uh, the Empire or whatever. Oh yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah, whatever it is. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. Near the railway line. Yeah. And uh, so they'd have to rush the film there. And it could take you know half an hour, an hour to be processed. Mm. And then they'd come back and edit it. Okay. So, yeah, you couldn't just rush back. It would have to be at least a couple of hours before something would go to air. Sure. Gosh. And uh, it was a really, really serious story. Mm. As soon as it processed, they just rush it and play it live. Okay. And just hope for the best and get the newsreader and to just get it out read there. Read the script, yeah. Oh, over gosh. pictures. Okay. And maybe fade up to a bit of live sound or something. Okay. Uh, on the on the go. So did you see that happen sometimes? It did, it did happen, yeah. On, on on things that happened. Yeah, yeah. And. See, the ABC was late getting into fil into tape, so right. the other uh, yeah. could have li breaking stories happening, yeah. and we'd have to wait an hour. Oh, okay. So there was a it was a real sort of uh, yeah, it's at a disadvantage really. And they were, and then I think uh, for Chogham in 1980 something or other, mm. they had permission to use electronic news gathering for that conference. Mm. Yep. And it worked okay, but then afterwards I had to go back to film. Oh, we joking? <laughs> because they had this thing, the thing between the film department and the electronic oh, department. Oh, my goodness. And the film cameraman and sound recorders belong to the film department. The electronics cameraman and sound people belong to the uh, mm. the electronic the, the um, OBs department. Mm. So none of that they couldn't work each other's gear, oh. and they said, well. You know, the film people have to learn electronic and electronic people have to learn film oh. before. Oh. And they had this big union dispute and they went under strike. Oh. And it was amazing. And How extraordinary. They, of course, other, the other stations said, OK, this is a, you learn this, mm. maybe do a day's course if you're lucky. Mm. You know, if you don't want to do it, leave the, go and get a job in the bank. Mm. And people learnt. Yeah. But the film people, they were really against it and they... Were, they a lot of the hardened film people didn't go across to electronic till the very last days. Is that right? And they, they poo-pooed these plastic cameras they talked about oh. as if that won't last, you know, film's the best thing and all yeah. this crap. You know, really... Yeah, it's pretty, they, pretty narrow mindset, really. Very narrow-minded and yeah. they had these skills they built over. They didn't want their... They're oh, no, threatened. They're threatened. They're, they're existentially they're, threatened. <laughs> yep. And their their mysterious work that yeah. no one could understand. Yeah, they didn't indeed. want... It being electronicised and made yeah, uh, yeah. available for mo easy, anyone could use. Sure. And it was the same old thing, you mm. know, and some of them were really bar dark on it and they mm. got dragged across and they hated using electronic cameras. Yeah. Because, to, mm. quite frankly, the mm. film cameras, 
the exposure didn't matter much because mm. the film has such a range. Mm. You could uh, you could, you could fix push it up it in any direction. Yeah, you could fix. Mm. It didn't really overexpose unless mm. you went ten stops over. Yeah, right. You could adjust it in the telecine department. Yes. Whereas with yes. video, if it went over, it just was useless. It just flashed out. If it went under, mm. it was useless because they mm. were noisy mm. and they actually had to do do exposure. So different skill set required. It it was. Mm. I'm some, I imagine some people wouldn't have adjusted to that too they easily. They didn't. And you know they'd say how good they were, but they, their levels were crap. Mm. I've noticed that you know, dubbing stuff here. Some okay. stuff's almost dark. Some stuff's super bright. Right. And uh, <coughs> it's just of course you're on that curve of film. Yeah. It, it's very. Um, yeah, it's very forgiving, isn't it? Yeah, it sense? is. Well, there we go. That, that, that's quite fascinating, that, that transition. Mm. So I imagine a lot of people would have sort of... Uh, that would have been quite a, uh, you know, a, a major disruption to... Well, they didn't... To, they were scared of it. Yeah, they would have been. Because the electronic... Although TV is electronic medium, they were in the... That they spent their lives in the film medium mm. and they were scared of, of, of electronics and technology in that respect. Mm. Mm. And, yeah, it was... Um, fascinating, isn't it? And yeah. the, the people using them, they wanted to keep using Nagra as a mixer because they wanted that, you know, that look important. That's right. Instead of just a little mixer or just using well, the camera. Well, that's what they knew. But it yeah. sounds like the new technology was quite a different ball game. It, it was, yeah. Yeah, and it would, it would have been a major challenge. <clears throat> yeah, to understand its idiosyncrasies. And yep. Its, mm. And the people who come up through tape, they understood it a bit, you know, they, they, yeah. what, what goes on, electronic faults. I mean, they weren't engineers, but they, mm. they could understand technical faults than well, uh, interpret them. Well, well with that resistance, so that were that were there problems with the, with the transition? Did it was it slow or was it? You know, yeah, it was were they slow. making a lot of mistakes at the start? Well, they did make a few mistakes. See, I came into it. I was because I'd, I'd done. I, I I got a job because there because I was. I said I'd like to do you know, electronic news gathering and stuff. Could have done some in, in Shep and everything. Yeah, sure. So I sort of bypassed the film people who didn't want to go to electronic they, they, yeah. they just thought it was, it was, mm. it was not going to go anywhere yeah, all the yeah. big programs are still going to be made on film so mm. if you go to electronic you're going to be stuck on news because mm. electronics only useful for news it's kind yeah. of not useful for big programs mm. and you're just going to be doing the crap and this is what their, their theory was yeah and they say if we stick in film we'll be doing the the, the top programs of course only news does mm. but of course it went tape mm. took over everything it would have done very quickly i imagine and the quality you know, it just went better and better, and now mm. we've got you know 8K. Mm. I mean, it's just mm. the film. It's just mm. you know, just can't stand. It's not no, it doesn't measure up, does it? And it's uh, yeah, they were, and they're steeped in that sort of uh, mm. the technology. Yeah. And I can see why it's like mm. disc. There's something about film, and mm. you're, you're dealing with something with the the, the original image on it. Mm. Mm. And it's it's very tangible, isn't it? It, it is, yeah. Because yeah. you actually you can hold a film up to the light, mm. and you can see you see the images on the film. It's very immediate. Yeah. It's something that's like a, yeah, it's a must, like a part of you. Whereas tapes more nebulous, I think. It is, and, and cards or whatever you yeah, record on now. Yeah, that's right. And you know, looking at the uncut news footage, it's interesting because when they button on, it's overexposed, and this this image comes out of the murk mm. as it you know mm. gets into exposure or whatever. Yeah, and you know the scratches and the mm. the imperfections. There's something mm. about it, yes. sort of mechanical and sort of human. Right. Yes, absolutely. And yeah. I, I sort of like it. I yeah. know it's it's old fashioned and it, yeah, had, yeah. it was going. It was no. It was going to. It, it mm. was leading nowhere. Mm. But I can see why people mm. who spent their lives in it. Mm. You know, electronic was so clean and crisp mm. and. So, so just well, no might character. Have sounded, you know? Might have seemed a bit artificial in some yeah, ways. Yeah, it was too sharp, too yeah. artificial. Yeah, and it was just. Um, yeah, yeah, I think you're right. I think that sort of notion of it being more human or more of a uh, something that they've. It's it's a very tangible medium because they, 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 it's so hands-on what they have to do. So they're sort of always in touch with the with the medium, you know. Whereas tape, I imagine, would have been just sort of fast tracking and more efficient, but yeah, less yeah. involving. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's and now people don't even understand tape. It's just no, they don't what it is. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you know, tape was a pain too. Spooling those cassettes, rrr, 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 and you know, just yeah. finding a place and yes. click bang. You hit the editor, click bang, whir, they'd spool back. Then co like yeah. it took about thirty seconds to do an edit. Just to do an edit. So they had their own issues. Yep, yep. It was just, you didn't have to process it, but there were still issues. And every yes. time, every time, you know, you went down a generation, you got worse quality. Right. Um, you know, until we got digital, that was a problem. So
So that, how, yes, how did that, that transpire? You would have been there seeing the, that move from um, the analog tape to digital tape. Well, that, that was a big, that was a major move because there was no generation loss. Mm. The pictures were much better quality, mm. and it was just overall better. Mm. And see, programs like Four Corners kept using film till the very last because their right. theory was that they may get, you know. 10 minutes before the program's meant to get to where there may mm. be an injunction about something have to cut ah, it out. Ah, right. Now a film, they just get a pair of scissors, cut it out. Yeah. And they fill up the time with a mm. studio talk or yes. just whatever. Yeah, sure. With tape, it meant you had to redub the whole thing. How interesting. And then you lose it. It takes time to do for a start. Yeah. And uh, you lose a generation of quality, which was quite yeah, a it? lot of quality loss in the analog days. That's a really fascinating argument mm. because that's not what you would expect. Yeah. But um, yeah, I can imagine for efficiency and for you know, uh, you know, immediate response, mm. you'd, you'd be better off using tape because physically cut it out. Yep, and they were happy. The, the, and you could do quick edit. You could put another scene into. Mm. It, you didn't have to look at the, play the whole thing. It's go okay. It's 56 minutes 26. Mm. Take this scene out. Put this one in. Mm. And it could be done. Mm. I mean, the big argument with against digital, particularly in the early days, was sort of catastrophic failure of systems because you've just got so much data in one mm. modality. Um, did you ever see any sort of major failures in that sort of area? Was there a really uh, both analog and digital? Remarkable Remarkably, remarkably stable. Yeah. The yep. main problems with cameras in the early days, the, when they had the separate recorders, the U-Matic recorders used to occasionally mm. jam up or go bad. Right. Once they had uh, in-camera recorders, most of the faults were with HT to do with the viewfinder. Okay. Or the tubes. Mm. Once they got to solid-state, uh, you know, um, mm. CCDs. Mm. The number of faults were very minimal. Okay. Very minimal. Um, yeah, it would have been much more reliable. You get uh, sometimes you get if the head was clogged at an RF low-level warning or something like that. Mm. But I, yeah. uh, only a couple of times stories were lost that I know of that mm. I was involved in through uh, mechanical or okay. uh, uh, yeah. electronic faults. Sure. Um, mm. Yeah, they are pretty well built, mm. and uh, I think uh, yeah. You know, people get you know, salt water spray that and stuff the machines up, but mm, mm. generally they're pretty reliable. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's, um, that's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Now, look, it, it, this whole migration from generations of uh, technology is just one of the most interesting things because it, uh, you know, it requires a whole a shift of consciousness into a you know, yeah. whole new set of possibilities and yep. approaches yeah, to the, things, the, the new skills. The whole operation of doing things. Yeah. yeah. So now they don't even have a sound person. They just have a single mm. one person. No one does it anymore. See, when I started, you'd never have a mic in shot. You'd never have neck mics. You'd have over the top. You'd, mm. you'd do an interview. You'd put us on stands ah. and you'd have over the top. Yeah. Uh, makes the lighting a bit harder, but yeah. shadows and things. But that so, was a way to do it. So what did you do more of? Did you do more of the sound side or the camera side? I did... I did sound from what um, about most mostly sound from seven um, eighty six or something to mm. ninety five. Then yep. I was shooting till two thousand one. Yeah. Then I left. Yeah. And went back casual mm. mainly as sound. Okay. Uh, so I did a you know, I did seven or well, six five years of of, of shooting. So yeah, I, I, sure. Um, mm. And that was started with analog cameras and ended up with the digital, the uh, beta cam, the, uh, the SX, which was a digital camera. Right, yeah. And you didn't have to worry so much about the exposure of burning out and those uh, amazing machines. Right. Um, yeah, so yeah. the other ones are pretty touchy. You go over, you it look, you know, really crap. They, they clip different colours, they clip at different times. Oh, really? Okay. Shit. Yeah, that's problematic. So, uh, mm. And you know, when I did sound, it was always, you know, I, you know when I was um, working uh, later on, mm. I'd always, if they were doing a big, you know, an important interview with important mm. people, and you know, mm. I'd mic put stands up, mics over the top and stuff like that. Okay. 
And, you know, that was the way he used to do it. Yep. And the camera guy thought, oh, this shit, mate. I've got to, how am I going to light this with this thing in the way? Right. And he yes, said, getting well, a shadow of the boom yeah. is a bit of a problem. And yeah. they said, just stick a neck mic on. I thought, well, yeah. you could do that too. What's the point of me being here if you mm. stick a neck mic on? But mm. that's mm. the way it's gone. Yeah, it seems like yeah, so that's what they do. It's certainly what they did when they came here. Yeah, I mean, that was just like... Mm. Well, why, if you're hiring an extra person, why stick a neck mic on? Mm. Of course, that's, that's, mm. the, that's the lazy way out. Yes, there certainly is. Yeah, interesting point. Yeah. So, so I mentioned a, uh, a, a boom would be just so much more effective in getting the, you know, the, yeah. the full experience. Yeah. It mm. looks a bit of a pain. It's fluffy and all in my face. That's right, yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Well, look, it, oh, since I'm going to Shep, I think I'll have to terminate this. Oh, fruitcakes, look at the time. Yeah. I know it's, it's going well. It's on a roll here. Yeah. yeah, it's fine. Yes, you better get on the road. We can, <laughs> we can continue it uh, next well, time. Absolutely. Yes, all good. Well, look, uh, have a great time in Chip yeah, and well, uh, you'd say hi to Dallas. I and, will. And I uh, hope it all goes well. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, all right then, Dave. Well, thanks for the chat. And yep. uh, I'll say VK3SL clear until next time. Okay, and, and cheers, uh, cheers, Noel. And all the best, Noel. Okay. okay, cheers. I won't, yeah. I won't even have a, 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 news, a, a, a music close down. We'll just close down. Yep. Cheers, okay. everyone. Cheerio. See Bye you next now. week, probably. Cheerio. Yeah.